This video is sponsored by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitoring application that gives you the power to see why bugs are happening and experience them just like your users. Try today at logrocket.com forward slash YT. Hey developers, how's it going? In this video, we are going to talk about when you should use Flexbox and when you should use the grid. Now, when Flexbox came out, a lot of us designers, a lot of us front-end developers were so excited because it changed the way we were doing layouts. And then comes the grid. Flexbox and grid both opened up so many opportunities for making interesting, compelling layouts. The only problem was and continues to be both of these layout options can get complicated very quickly. And many of us aren't quite sure when to use Flexbox, aren't quite sure when we should use Grid. Well, today's video, I'm hoping to clear that up. I created a little cheat sheet here. We're also going to be taking a look at some uh, other CodePen examples. I'm going to include the link. We're also going to take a look at this site, Straw Dogs. It's a simple landing page, but it incorporates both the Grid and Flexbox. And I think it can really help illustrate the big differences between the two and when you might use Flexbox, when you might use Grid. Let's go back to this little cheat sheet, CSS versus Flexbox. I already have a typo here. Can I just fix this really quick? So Flexbox, and this is probably the most important thing to remember when you're working on your layouts. Flexbox is focusing on items in a single dimension. That's one dimensional in a row or a column. The grid, on the other hand, is going to lay out items in two dimensions, rows and columns, 2D. Flexbox is row or column, grid is rows and columns. And that is, I think, the biggest difference between the two and something you really need to keep in mind when you're designing your web apps and web pages that these two, the grid opens up that second dimension. Now, another difference is that Flexbox is content based. In other words, content first, whereas the grid is container based and it's layout first. So to help illustrate that, the grid helps you create the outer layout of the the page, the skeleton, if you want to think about it like that, then you can build complex and responsive design using that grid. And here's where the flex box comes in. It mostly helps align content and move blocks. One thing I've been noticing though with a lot of the grid tutorials, they were written a few years ago when there wasn't a lot of support in the browsers for grid. So if we're checking out the modern, the current status of the grid support. I'm over here at caniuse.com and I just typed in grid. And as you can see here, CSS grid layout level one, all major browsers supporting this. Uh, no surprise here with IE 11, there are some bugs in there. Even for IE users, IE 11, uh, we have this thing called CSS supports. If we go to Flexbox, we're gonna see the same thing, all supported by all major browsers. This is the gap property. If we go to the actual layout module, same thing here. It is buggy with IE 11 and some of these older browsers, but again, supports is going to help you with that because they even give the example of the grid here. Um, they're using floats for fallbacks. And that's something you can do when you use Flexbox, when you use grid, uh, even if you use both of them, you can go ahead and implement supports. It's a great, simple rule that just saves you when people are using deprecated browsers. And I really just want to emphasize this one more time. Flexbox is for items in a single dimension, in a row or a column. Grid is for two-dimensional rows and columns. I have this collection of pens. Let's go to my dashboard here and we'll take a look at some of these selections of Flexbox and Grid. Now, Rachel Andrew is a CSS guru. She is always blogging and tweeting and sharing her findings on these amazing CSS layouts and properties and all this good stuff. And she basically built a very simple illustration showing you Flexbox versus grid. Looking at the syntax of the Flexbox, it's actually very succinct. It's a nice, easy implementation. She's just using display flex. She also has a flex wrap with wrap, uh, but that's pretty much it. But down here we have the grid. This is the second one again, this pink illustration. Uh, displaying it is the same simple syntax as Flexbox, display grid. 
And then she declared her grid template columns, repeating autofill with the Minimax. And then she has some, just some styling down here for the divs. Here's an example of just the CSS grid. But again, check out the link to the code pen and you can play around with this and see how the grid is being implemented. Let's go down and just see that we have the display grid. Other properties we have here are the grid column gap, the grid row gap, just creating some spacing and it just looks so clean. Here's a simple example using the Flexbox. Now, this is an example I chose because it is very clearly one dimensional. We're not going up and down, we're just going one direction. And same concept here with Flexbox as it is with the grid in terms of responsiveness. As we tighten this up, we're gonna see these dice start to respond automatically and that is just, ugh. It's a thing of beauty. Flexbox and Grid have made our lives as front-end developers and designers so much easier and so much more sophisticated with less code. And the code that we use now with Flexbox and Grid is just more powerful. So this is, again, just a simple example, but I think it does illustrate a good use case for Flexbox. Here's a nice, simple, clean example of the CSS grid, nice and colorful. As I mentioned in this slide, the grid is container-based. That means layout first, layout-centric, you could even say. Uh, and this is strictly layout. Now remember, you can blend the grid with the Flexbox and where the Flexbox might come into play here is inside these boxes that are made using the grid. So the grid is the layout and then Flexbox is the content. As we see here, this is one of our rules. Flexbox is content-based, the grid is container-based. So our content inside of these things is going to be the Flexbox, or it could possibly be Flexbox. Um, and right now, we are strictly just using the grid because this is our layout. So inside the footer, for example, we could have various widgets, we could have links, inside related images, we could have a flex box, um, or not, you know, it's not, we're not forced to use a flex box. It could be a possibility here if you are trying to just put your images on a row. These other areas too are candidates for using flex box inside of them, main content, a hero image, and so on. Let's go to a real world example of CSS Grid and Flexbox working together to create something so awesome. Look at this layout. This is something just, you know, a few years ago, you would think would be just a photo. And guess what? It's not. It's CSS Grid working with Flexbox to create this amazing design. What I'm gonna do, I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna hit Command-Alt-I. I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna click around so this can really illustrate to you where the grid is being implemented and where Flexbox is. So right away we see right here, I hover over this, the grid, and we can see the lines with the layout. The grid is actually a grid. So, you know, no, no guessing here what this actually is. You can see those lines creating a grid. Now, if we go over here to a component, um, Let's go back here. I do want to emphasize this. A grid is container based and we did see that in action right here. We did see the layout there. Flexbox is content based. So if we pick some content, we target some content, there's a really good chance it's going to be made with Flexbox. So my first instinct was to go over here. Let's check this out. This is a, a big paragraph. We'll click that. And I'm just going to go into the filter here and type in flex. And as you see, display flex is the name of the game with this content and with this paragraph. Exploring pages like this is so powerful if you're trying to understand the implementation. And I encourage everyone who's trying to wrap their head around this to go out and find some pages built with the grid and Flexbox and just rip open the console and start exploring in this way. Uh, grab your dev tools and start exploring and just seeing some of these properties and seeing what they're doing with layout. Sometimes the best way to start is just by looking at other people's work, fiddling around with it, you know, maybe playing with some of these properties here and, and seeing what happens. You know, what would happen if we set the grid column gap to 80 pixels? And look at that immediate change and we can see what that does to our layout and this is just such a great example and if we quick click here it links us to wikipedia so it is a functional landing page to summarize when you should use flexbox and when you should use the grid use the flexbox if you have items in a single dimension in either in a row or a column use the grid when your items need to go into rows and columns 
Flexbox is content-based. That is, it takes a content-first approach, whereas the grid is container-based. It takes a layout-first approach. And we really saw that illustrated here in this example for the Straw Dogs promo poster. The grid helps you create the outer layout of the page. We did see that here. Then you can build complex and responsive design, which is layout-first. Flexbox mostly helps align content and move blocks. Um, let's just go like this. Look at that. That is probably the most beautiful thing I've seen all day today. That is just wonderful. This is the brilliance and this is the power of using the grid along with Flexbox. You don't have to use Flexbox with the grid, but to really get something looking like this, I would highly recommend using both and really just experimenting. Experiment using Mozilla Docs um, and just you know, break some things. I think a lot of us are sometimes hesitant to start these projects because we are afraid so many things will break. Just start a, a quick dummy project and see what breaks and see the power of some of these properties. You don't have to get too crazy to see some beautiful results. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.